they say old school mechanics, back when the engineer and the machinist were the same person, could go out in their back shed and drill through inch thick aluminum or three eighths thick steel. And so I've always felt like it was a little bit hard to believe. How difficult is it to drill through metal by hand? Well, let's try it. So let's talk specs real quick. I'm using a 3 16th inch cobalt bit. Let's say I rotate the handle at 120 RPM. With our gear ratio, that's a 1.5 inch pinion being driven by a five inch gear, approximately, that's my tape measure measurement. So that's a 310 gear ratio. So every three rotations in, I get 10 rotations out. So 120 times 10 thirds is 400 RPM. There's also a lower gear where I could drop down to 160 RPM and increase the torque if I wanted to. Torque becomes more important as you get deeper in. For the gear changeover, I just pull out this bevel gear cassette such that the smaller gear is driving the pinion as opposed to the larger gear. In terms of torque, let's say I'm driving this five inch long handle down with a little under 25 pounds. So five times 24 pounds is 120 inch pounds. Divided by 12, that's 10 foot pounds going through our gear multiplier that multiplies the speed, the torque reduces. If you wanna learn more about gear ratios, I have a gearbox specific video in the description below. All right, and we made it. I'll just chamfer the edges with a deeper tool and it's not a bad machined hole. And of course, back in the day, they would have access to streams and rivers and could use hydropower to support this kind of work. But still, machinists could have tools like this in their own homestead shed to tinker. And there are also smaller versions of this type of thing for smaller holes, weaker material, or thinner material. This one even has a little secret pocket for drill bits. All right. Let's try steel. For the steel, I'm just keeping it in a low gear. That's maximum torque. Applying a downward force of maybe five to 10 pounds. And after that hole is drilled, you can do secondary machining operations like tapping. And then with the tapped hole, you can thread in a fastener. And that's it, really not too bad. These kinds of things you can find at your local scrapyard or estate sales. Sometimes they have to be restored. There might be folks making these new, I don't know. But the moral of the story is you can do a lot of things without grid power, without PV cells without power walls. You can do a lot of things with your own two hands. Mm -hmm.